everybody, Punisher88 here, coming at you once again with another Thursday review. Now before I get into the review, there's a couple things I wanted to mention. The first one being, there's still plenty of time to enter my 100 subscriber contest. The deadline is June 16th, but as I mentioned, um, if by the 16th, if I still only have four entries, I am going to extend the deadline for another week just to give more people a chance to enter. And also, if anyone's curious um, what the questions are and whatnot, well, then I will post a link in the description to the actual uh, contest announcement video. So you guys can go check that out. And the second thing I wanted to mention was, no, I did not forget about the lame supervillain of the week. The reason why I didn't do a video yesterday was because um, I was in a bit of a rush heading to work last night. And in the process of leaving the house... I ended up forgetting my notes on my desk. Therefore, when I got to work, I had no material, and no material meant no video. But don't worry, next Wednesday there will be a lame supervillain of the week, so everything's cool. So now with that being said, it's time for a review. So yesterday morning, after a very long hiatus, I took to the Punisher88 Facebook page and uh, I put up a poll to see what you guys wanted to see me review today. Because I'll be honest, there were so many good books that I couldn't decide on my own. So anyway, uh, I ended up putting up five options. And out of those five options, the book that won was Sons of the Devil number one from Image Comics. So, for those of you who watch my reviews, you guys know that I like to start with the cover first. So let's check it out. Now, right off the bat, yes, I love this cover uh, for a couple reasons. First, it is a variant cover. This is the Paolo Rivera cover, or in Image's case, they don't just say variant. This is cover C. And um, the cool thing was I never even asked for this cover. They just put it in my, in my pile of books, so that's pretty neat. Um, I love the, the dark gritty colors used on this cover. Uh, I like this creepy yet cool looking longhorn wearing dude. And uh, I like the overall uh, cult vibe because, you know, we see the, the, the melting candles. We see this guy clearly has a pentagram on his chest. You know, you get that cult vibe and it just, it's just super cool. And if any of you out there watched my video on Saturday, you guys would know that this cover made my uh, top covers of the week list because I thought it's just a super cool cover. So, uh, yeah, so far, this book's batting a thousand. So now it's time to get down to what I like to call the nitty gritty. But first, before getting into that, I just wanted to mention uh, more to the uh, newer viewers slash subscribers to my channel. Uh, if at any point during this review or any of my previous reviews, you notice I look up and down at the camera quite a bit, or it sounds like I'm reading to you guys. The reason for that is I keep my notes in front of me. Why do I keep my notes in front of me? Well, there's a couple reasons. The first reason is I find it helps the review flow a lot smoother compared to my older reviews, where I used to wing it the whole time. The second reason is with the notes, let's say I'm reading a part and I get stuck, I can backtrack and then keep going. And third, reviewing, uh, like memorizing text was never one of my strong points, so the notes are technically a help aid. So if you guys are cool with that, awesome. We'll get through this review and we'll be on our merry way. So I'm going to give you the good, I'm going to give you the bad, and I'm going to give you my overall verdict. Sound cool? All right. So first off, the good. Um, basically, it's never easy deciding whether or not to jump into a brand new comic series. I think we've all been there. And, uh, you know, most of us have pull lists that are already overflowing. <laughs> but when, when you have a new series with a brand new setting and characters, it really helps when you have a known quality in the mix. And uh, Brian uh, Buccellato, I think that's how you say his name, uh, is 
no stranger to comic fans. With his co-writing work on The Flash and Detective Comics, uh, he also ventured off on his own on several projects such as Foster and Injustice Gods Among Us. So, starting off with a flashback, Tony Infante's art immediately takes us to a dark beginning. Um, if you're trying to sell readers on a new series, you have to grab their attention right away. And the first couple pages absolutely do that. Uh, then we meet Travis Crow. Uh, he's understandably not in a good place, and uh, it's almost as if he's on the same page as us as we wait for the complete backstory to unfold. Now, despite the mood set in the beginning, you're not quite sure what to expect. Uh, Buccioletto and Infante slowly peel away the layers of the story, and we get to see where Travis is and get a good sense of what his life is like. Uh, we start to see there is much more going on in the bigger picture, which is starting to really come into focus. Um, knowing there are dark things around the corner with Travis, unaware keeps readers really on edge. I know I was on edge reading this book. Um, the more you get to know Travis, the more you feel for him, though. Uh, he may come, off, come across as a bit of an ass in the beginning, but it's clear he has issues, and he needs to know more about his past. So, though he may seem like an ass, it's not his fault. Uh, the bad. There really isn't anything bad about this book. Uh, you'll want to know more about the overall story and how it's all connected. So, we can just skip that part. And now, the verdict. Uh... It's an intriguing introduction that has me, anyway, hooked to the overall story. Uh, it's visually stunning, and it's a really insightful yet horrific look into cults and the bonds that really connect family. And basically, we're just getting a glimpse into the overall story, and Brian uh, Buccellato and Tony Infante really have created an intriguing new world that I, I think is going to catch on with a lot of readers. And if you guys are really into the whole cult horror kind of thing, this is a book for you. So, um, yeah, that's all i got to say about it. Uh, that's my review. Kind of short. I'm surprised at myself. But... Um, yeah, that's that. Straight to the point. Huh? So, if you guys enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. If you give it a thumbs down, well, that just means i got to work harder on pleasing you guys. And if you guys enjoy reviews like this one, take a look around my channel. i got tons of reviews. i got unboxings. i got backstories on lame characters, lame comic characters, I mean. You know, i I got something for everyone. So, take a look around comment on anything. I love reading uh, viewer comments. Like anything. Dislike anything. That's right. I said dislike. No one's perfect. And then before leaving, make sure to click that subscribe button. Alrighty. So uh, we're at almost nine minutes. I want to try and keep this under ten. So I'm going to try and not ramble too much. So I'm going to try and end this here. Uh, I'm probably going to go work on my thoughts and stuff video for the season finale of Daredevil. And um, that's about it. All right, guys. So till next time, this is Punisher88 signing off. See ya.